tonight. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Ah, there's a nice one. Okay. Oh, I gotta send a notice out to everybody that I am online. Hold on a second. Let me find my phone. It's great news. Alrighty. All right. Um, let me check to make sure we're online. We've had some problems later with these linking to the online services. I am online on Facebook. Let me just check. YouTube. YouTube. My channel. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be going on. Oh, what, baby? I'm to have to upload it later. Okay, so much for that. Okay, everybody. We are getting ready to start. Let us start by chanting something like we do. Oh, come. 
kala Krishna Krishna na bole Divine Grace, Abaya Chalana, Bhakti Bananda, Gosami, Shila Pohupad Ki Jai, Niskan, Founder Acharya, Shila Pohupad Ki Jai, Ananta Koti, Vaishna, Vrind Ki Jai, Namacharya, Shila Pena, Stakur Ki Jai, Parem Se Go Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Nechananda Shidwe Dagaraka, Shibasari Gaur, Bhakti Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopakopanath Shyam Kun Radha Kunda Giri Gobradan Kijai Vrindavanam Kijai Maturam Kijai Jagaratha Sami Kijai Shpati Bala Siddhi Kijai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Kijai Gol Pridananda Hari Hari All glory is the assembled devotees 
All glories the assembled devotees, all glories the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Nama Om Vishnu Pataya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Paranta Swami Namani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nivashesha Shunyavadi Paschachate Shatarani So Om Maganati Miranda Shah Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshodan Miritam Yena Tazmai I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who so kindly opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge while I was blinded in the darkness of ignorancia. So, we're going to continue with our study of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and the next verse we're going to read is one of the most important verses in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Little history before we get to that verse. Okay. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, previous to this particular verse, was meeting with a Brahmin in South India. Wow. He'd gone to South India and meeting with this Brahmin whose name was Kurumadev. Not He's Kurma Brahman, sorry. <laughs> he wasn't the deity Kurma. But anyway, meeting with this Brahman, let me just try to get our place in here. Oh, yeah. We've got to start with 128. Okay. Meeting with this Brahman, uh, the Brahman received him very nicely, fed Lord Chaitanya, asked Lord Chaitanya to bless his family. And then the Brahman said, I'm leaving home. Good. My family. I'm, of course, making it a little bit more dramatic than the Brahmin. He said, I have been liberated by your association, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why should I be entangled in this deep, dark well any longer? Anyway. So, I'm going with you, Lord Chaitanya. you got a partner now. Because Lord Chaitanya gave him his full blessings and he turned this Brahmin into a pure devotee. And so what did Lord Chaitanya say? Don't do it. Don't speak like that anymore. Stay home and be an ideal householder. And the Brahmin is thinking, oh my God, I was just trying to get out of my household life. Well, Many people want to renounce their household life because of difficulty. Because it is difficult, you know, paying the bills, putting up with all the relatives and all their different uh, needs, all the different ceremonies. I mean, get into household life, then you got uh, uncles and wife's uncle, the wife's grandfather. I mean, there's always someone either dying or getting married or having a kid or sending the kid to school or the kid's graduating from the school or someone in trouble in the family. And it's just like, it's never ending. And so this Brahmin is thinking, I just want to Join Lord Chaitanya and dance and chant 24 hours a day. Give me sannyas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Well, got news for you. That's not the right motive to take sannyas because it says if one renounces because of difficulty, guess what? That renunciation is in the mood a passion. It's not transcendental. Now, I'm not criticizing that Brahman because that Brahman was a pure devotee. So, But Lord Chaitanya said in an example with that Brahman. And he said, don't ever talk like that. Stay home. But not just stay home. Oh my God. Are you condemning me just to stay home and fulfill the needs of my family? Oh my God. 
I just want to chant Hare Krishna and read the Srimad Bhagavatam and dance and chant. What's happening? It was interesting. And of course, uh, one interesting thing is uh, in regard to my position, of course, I don't have family. Actually, they all passed away by now. So, uh, is that I have so many responsibilities. Like this morning, I had a GBC meeting that went on for hours and hours. The day before, we had a meeting. And then so many things happened during the day, meeting with people, planning different things, counseling disciples. And sometimes I think, I just want to go to Vrindavan and become a Babaji. Now what's a Babaji? A Babaji is one who simply dresses very, very simply. And he just chants the holy names and goes around Govardhan. Hey Radhe, Raja Deva Ke, Hey Nanda Shuno Kuta. Like Prabhupada had uh, one god brother, very advanced, pure devotee, Krishna's Babaji. And any time anyone asks him about anything, almost anything, what would he do? He would simply say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and he would laugh at you. Krishna, Krishna. And he would also chant bhajans and everything like that, but whole life was just chanting, dancing, glorifying the Lord, and nothing else in this world, no worries. So sometimes I'm thinking, wow, take me away, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I was thinking, I'm generally thinking like this particular Brahman, Kurma Brahman was thinking. Uh, however, I reign in my mind by understanding that Prabhupada is saying to me, just like he said to this Brahman, that Lord Chaitanya said to the Brahman, don't ever think like that. You have responsibilities for me. So, of course, if one sees his or her household life as what? Krishna's service and connected to Krishna. That's a devotee anyway. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashati Tashaham Na Pranashami Sachame Na Pranashati. What does that mean? That's from 6.30 in the Bhagavad Gita. One who sees me everywhere, it sees everything in me, is never lost to me, nor am I ever lost to him or her. So, uh, so one should see everything that one does as connected to Krishna. And that's called yukta vairagya. So if one has responsibilities in the Krishna conscious movement, or if one has a family, one should not renounce them but one should give them to Krishna and do it nicely for Krishna. <laughs> so many devotees have this improper understanding of renunciation. They think, I mean, one crazy thing is, like if they have a car, they think to take care of the car is maya. To clean the car is maya. To put oil in the car is maya. To put new tires on the car is Maya. <laughs> to, all right, I'm going to get even more pointed right now. Wow, see? <laughs> see, my computer even knows I'm going to get more pointed. That is a cool computer. So anyway, <laughs> even the computer knows. I didn't even want it to do that. It just did that. So I'm going to get even more pointed. Okay, so people think there's a virus. To wear a mask is maya. To take a vaccine is maya. Well, <laughs> then I can say about those devotees, you are in maya because everything is connected to Krishna. The vaccines come from Krishna. Where do you think they come from, you rascal? You think they come from some mundane person? Krishna's arranged them for the devotee's service. Krishna's arranged the cars for the devotee's service. Krishna's arranged your family for a devotee's service. Krishna's arranged a temple for a devotee's service. Krishna's arranged so many things for your service. So, 
you know, we have this concept that, you know, wearing masks is maya to protect you and the devotees. People are so damn stupid. Really stupid. Uh, that is impersonalism. If you see everything is connected to Krishna, then you'll deal nicely in the material world. You'll fix your car, you wear a mask, if there's a virus. You'll be practical. Okay, enough. I think I have to zoom out, if that's all right. Zoom out. Hey, zoom out. Anyway, forgot the sign for zooming out. <laughs> This, 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 this. I think this is the zoom out sign. No, anyway. Whatever it is, Krishna wants me to be close up here. So the point is, okay, let's get back to the story. The point is that that is called Falgui Vairagya, renunciation of something that can be used in personal service. So if you have a family, your Krishna conscious responsibility is to have or make your family Krishna conscious. You can't renounce the family. It's ridiculous. And so this Brahmana was thinking like that. And Lord Chaitanya chastised him. No, don't ever think like that. Okay. Don't ever think like that. And so then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving him instructions what to do with his family, what to do with his household life. And we're going to hear about that right now. So without further ado, we will go to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay. So, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda, Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nichananda, Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nichananda, Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Okay, just one final thing. So if Krishna is giving you a family, you have to take very good care of your family. You should see your family as being connected to Krishna, not disconnected. Because you have some Mayavad philosophy, you see things as disconnected from Krishna. But everything belongs to Krishna. Isha Bhashamidam Sarvam Yat Gincha Jagajam Jagat Tena Chaktena Bunjadha Madgridha Kashasvidana Everything is owned and controlled by the Supreme Personality of God. And we are always dealing with Krishna's property. Not your property. So it's not for you to renounce it. You rascal. Okay. On that happy note, let us... I think I just want to zoom out with this camera first. Hold on. I just want to do it manually. Hold on. Okay. Uh, I don't like seeing my face so big. Uh, let's see. There we go. There we go. Nah. Now it's normal. Okay, so here's the famous verse. Remember this one? This verse is applicable for everyone. You should memorize this verse. Yari Dega. Tarika Krishna Padesha Amara Gyaya Guru Hanya Tarahi Desha 
Instruct everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in this way. Become a spiritual master and let, try to liberate everyone in this land. Prabhupada explains this is the sublime mission of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Many people come and inquire whether they have to give up family life to join the society, but this is, or that is not our mission. One can remain comfortably in his residence. We simply request everyone to chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. If one is a little literate, that means if you can read, and can read Bhagavad Gita as it is in Srimad Bhagavatam, that is so much the better. These works are now available in an English translation and are done very authoritatively to appeal to all classes of men. Instead of living in gross and material activities, people throughout the world should take advantage of this movement and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at home with their families. One should also refrain from sinful activities, illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, and intoxication. Out of these four items, illicit sex is very sinful. Every person must get married. It's the Nazis. Well, every woman, especially, must get married if the women outnumber the men. Some men can accept more than one wife. Well, Prabhupada changed that instruction, so don't get worried. He said only one wife, one life, one life, one wife. Be like Lord Ramchandra. Prabhupada was reflecting at this particular point when he wrote that purport, the culture that he came from, and this is no longer applicable. In that way, there will be no prostitution society. If men can marry more than one wife, illicit sex life will be stopped. One can also produce many nice preparations to offer Krishna from grains, fruits, vegetables, and milk. Why should one indulge in unnecessary meat eating and maintain horrible slaughterhouses? What is the use of smoking and drinking tea and coffee? People are already, I'm going to speak something very interesting after this purport, intoxicated by material enjoyment. If they indulge in further intoxication, what chance is there for self-realization? Similarly, one should not partake in gambling and unnecessarily agitate the mind. The real purpose of human life is to attain the spiritual platform and return to Godhead. That is the summum bonum, that means the goal of spiritual realization. The Krishna Conscious Movement is trying to elevate human society to the perfection of life by pursuing the method described by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his advice to the Brahman Kurma. That is, one should stay at home, chant the Hare Krishna mantra, and preach the instructions of Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In other words, if you have the highest knowledge, if you have the ability to help people and you don't help them, in the name of renouncing things, you are a rascal. You are a big rascal. <laughs> That's a fact. So whatever maximizes your helping people, and for 99.99999% of the people in this world, that means you remain at home and make your family members Christian country, you invite people over to your home for prasadam. Prabhupada said, when a grahasta one time asked Prabhupada, what is my duty? Prabhupada said, every time you go to eat, you should cry out loudly. If anyone's hungry, please let them come eat. If anyone's hungry, please let them come eat. If anyone's hungry, please let them come eat. So you cry out three times. In other words, the whole point is, of course, if you're living in the forest, that's another thing. You should feed the bugs and the snakes and the chipmunks and squirrels. But so in any case, the whole point is the grahasa life is, a, is meant for helping others, becoming guru, not necessarily initiating guru, but instructing others in Krishna consciousness. And it's an ideal situation to do that. I mean, us sannyasis, yeah, we can give some philosophy here and there. You know, we're half decent. So, uh, but we don't, can't invite people generally to our home. We can invite people to the temple. But generally, it's not like 
a warm, friendly relationship. You meet a sannyasi and you think, oh my God, he must be strange. He's a sannyasi. Anyway, especially in the Western world, people think like that. What's wrong with you? Why did you give everything up? You don't you know what life is all about? So it's uh, so grahastha life is the ideal situation to preach from, and the sannyasis they guide the grahasthas, and the grahasthas can bring people many, 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 many people to Krishna consciousness. And the only thing you have to do to become Krishna conscious is what chant Hari Krishna. I was asked this question today. You know what is the essential process in Krishna consciousness. The essential process is chanting. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Everything else is secondary. All the rituals, mudras, mantras, even the deity worship, everything else is secondary. Uh, the chanting is necessary and sufficient to bring you to Krishna consciousness and everything else is to help with the chanting. Every mudra you do, everything else you do, it helps with the chanting. It helps you chant. Like you have to be humble, you have to understand you're a servant, then you can chant nicely. It all helps. All this is helping. The cleanliness is helping you. Serving the Vaishnava is helping you, giving you special mercy. But the chanting is this very center of everything. Try to remember that. Chanting, chanting, chanting. Hopefully you remember that. So that's the essential practice, and that can be done anywhere in any ashram, anywhere at which you're going to hear a verse about that in a second. But anyway, so let me tell you something funny that was described today, because Prabhupada here say, says one simply has to chant and stop taking intoxication. So today, I was talking to two people who told me how difficult it was to give up intoxication. How they had to, they were shaking, they were sweating, they couldn't sleep at night. Oh my God. And what were they addicted to, addicted to? Some, you were thinking, you were thinking, some really heavy drug, oh my God, what's happening? You've really saved these poor conditioned souls, Maharaj. No, that drug that they were taking is available in any supermarket in the world. That drug, was sugar. And by giving up sugar, they went through severe withdrawal pains, pangs, intense suffering for days. For days. Oh my God. Giving up sugar. I'm not saying that one shouldn't take sugar, but People are addicted in the name of Mahaprasadam. Prabhupada said, in the name of Mahaprasadam, many stalwarts have fallen down. You take a little, like Prabhupada, he took a little bite. But many devotees, and that's why so many devotees are suffering lifestyle diseases. Lifestyle diseases means diseases that are there, precipitated, caused, made worse by certain lifestyles that you have or I have. Not exercising, eating a lot of sugar, eating fried foods. I have a series on the internet that you're welcome to watch. It's on my YouTube channel, Beer Krishna Goswami, called Stop Killing the devotees. Too much salt, that's another one. Stop killing the devotees because it's sinful that actually the diet that many of you are taking is killing you. Literally, figuratively, and otherwise. Anyway, 
I just wanted to mention that about intoxication because it, it is a fact. It is a fact, and these devotees today, these two devotees, revealed it to me. So I wanted to reveal it to everybody. And the best way to give it up is just to stop doing it and suffer for a few days, and then you'll feel better, you'll feel lighter. Like I'm 72 years old, I don't take any of that stuff. And I'm very healthy, I run every day, I walk every day, I'm happy. Anyway, so don't take intoxication. So, I'm not saying that sugar is intoxicating, but sugar can be intoxicating if you misuse it. Anything can be intoxicating if you misuse it. Anything can be dangerous. So, I'm sure I lost a lot of viewers on that one. So, kaba kabuna bahibe tomara vishaya taranga punarapi etani pabe mora sanga. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu further advised the Brahmana Kurma. If you follow this instruction, your materialistic life at home will not obstruct your spiritual advancement. Indeed, if you follow these regulated principles, we will again meet here, or rather, you will never lose my company. Hmm. In other words, if one gives everything to Krishna, Brahma, uh, as the verse we quoted yesterday, Brahma Pranam Brahma Havir Brahmagno Brahmana Tam Brahma Tena Gantabhyam Brahma Karam uh, one gives everything to Krishna, then everything becomes spiritualized, including one's family. This is an opportunity for everyone. If one simply follows the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu under the guidance of his representative, Guru Dev, and chants the Hare Krishna mantra, teaching everyone as far as possible the same principle, the contamination of the materialistic way of life will not even touch him. Does not not matter whether one lives in a holy place like Vrindavan, Navadweep, or Jagannath Puri, or in the midst of European cities where the materialistic way of life is very prominent. If a devotee follows the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he lives in the company of the Lord. Wherever he lives, he converts that place into Vrindavan and Navadweep. This means that materialism cannot touch him. This is the secret of success for one advancing in Krishna consciousness. Now, if one doesn't follow those injunctions, follow the regulated principles and chant the holy names and lives in Navadweep or Vrindavan or something like that, he is not in Vrindavan and Navadweep. It's a big illusion. Many times I find devotees, they buy a house, you know, in a holy place thinking and go there, but they're not there until they purify their consciousness. And if you purify your consciousness, you're there in any case even if your physical body is not there. Don't be a rascal. Don't be a rascal. So much rascal them happens in the holy dams. Prabhupada did not want materialistic people or devotees who were not advanced living in the holy dams. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that when one goes to the holy dam, you stay for a fortnight. For those you don't know what that means, doesn't mean four nights, it means a fortnight, which means a half a month, two weeks. Because if you stay any longer, you will commit offenses, you will take the holy dom for granted. It's like that dealing with the spiritual masters, like that the spiritual masters around a lot, and if you are not advanced, you will take him or her as an ordinary person. The people think, take the Holy Dham as an ordinary person. They just, not person, but an ordinary place. And they just live there and they just do their nonsense and overeat and, you know, watch Bollywood movies and engage in all sorts of nonsense and smoke ganja in the Holy Dham. Useless. If you're going to smoke ganja, be a nonsense. Be a nonsense somewhere else. Be honest about it. If you say, I'm a resident of a Holy Dham. Well, you're a resident of, I won't tell you where. So, at whoever's house, Lord Chaitanya accepted his alms by taking prasadam. He would convert the dwellers to a sankirtan movement and advise them just as he advised the brahmana named Kurma. Prabhupada said the cult, cult means a, a group. It doesn't, it's not negative, it's not a negative word, uh, pejorative as they say. 
sometimes people take it as pejorative in their modern age, but it's not. It means the group of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was explained here very nicely. One who surrenders to him and is ready to follow him with heart and soul does not need to change his location, nor is it necessary for one to change his status. One may remain a householder, a medical practitioner, an engineer, whatever. It doesn't matter. One only has to follow the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and instruct friends and relatives in the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And even if you don't know, you just read the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to others. One has to learn humility and meekness at home. Obey your wife. Following the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and in that way, one's life will be spiritually successful. One should not try to be an artificially advanced devotee, thinking, why am I first class devotee? So it is uh, best not to accept any disciples. Such thinking should be avoided. So it's not that people go around initiating everybody, but we have to risk. We have to give guidance to people. We have to take chances. You shouldn't think I'm too advanced. Such thinking should be avoided. Because I, uh, Mahabhagwat doesn't accept disciples. But who is a Mahabhagwat? One has to become... But a Mahabhagwa steps down, like Srila Prabhupada stepped down and accepted disciples. One has to become purified at home by chanting the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra and preaching the principles enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus, one can become a spiritual master and be freed from the contamination of material life. There are many sahajas. That means people take things very cheaply. You think devotional service is very cheap. They can just think, I'm a gopi, I'm a coward boy. Hurry, bull. And sometimes these sahajas, men, they dress like women. And they put lipstick on. And they are ugly as sin. Maybe not as sin. They're pretty ugly. There are many sahajas who decry the activities of the six ghost swamis. Srila Rupa, Sanatana, Raghunath Das, Bhattu Raghunath, Jiva and Gopal Bhattu Goswamis, who were the personal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and who enlightened society by writing books on devotional service. Similarly, Naradhamma Das Thakur and other great acharyas like Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, and others accepted many thousands of disciples to induce them to render devotional service. However, there is a class of Sahajas who think that these activities are opposed to the principles of devotional service. Indeed, they consider such activities to be simply another phase of materialism. Wow. Now, Prabhupada is directly referring to certain people criticized him for mixing with the mess Westerners, that's us, and bringing them to Krishna consciousness. Thus, opposing the principles of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they commit offenses at his lotus feet. They should better consider his instructions instead of seeking to be considered humble and meek, should refrain from criticizing the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who engage in preaching. To protect his preachers, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was given much clear advice in these verses of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now, if you look at our Sampradaya, you'll find the prominent Acharyas, they're always like really dynamic personalities. And some of them are ladies, too. Yes. Some ladies, some men, but they're dynamic. They're dynamic personalities, not static personalities. Simply sit at home and chant Hare Krishna. Or sit under a tree. So that is the message Prabhupada is giving us. And people may criticize him, people may criticize us, but it's our business to help others. If you have something valuable, and you see others suffer, just like if you have money, if you have food, and other people are starving to death, and you don't help them, you are a rascal. So in the same way you see people's lives are being ruined, and they're doing the karmic activities, and their destination is unknown or known, as the case may be, and you don't help them. If someone's ready to go fall off a cliff, and you don't warn them, you're responsible, you rascal. Pate aite tivalihe rahe grame yandrakari vikshikare 
se maha jane kurme aiche riti daiche kaila sarvatani ilachale punagyabat noi lagoshani while on his tour Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would spend the night at a temple by the road. Whenever he accepted food from a person, he would give him the same advice. He gave the Brahman named Kurma. He adopted this process until he returned to Jagannath Puri from his South Indian tour. In other words, he wanted to branch out. You understand? Branch out and make everybody Krishna conscious because that's exponential. You know, if I make two people Krishna conscious in each one of those two, we explained this the other day, make two people, that's four, and each one of those four people make two, that's eight. If each one of those eight people make two, that's 16. So that increases uh, exponentially, not arithmetically. Arithmetically would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exponentially would be two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty, four hundred, twenty-eight. 256. That's quick. Woo! And that's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's process. Each one of us should bring at least 10 people to Krishna consciousness, if not more. And that doesn't mean just initiating them. It means bringing them to Krishna consciousness. And bringing people to Krishna consciousness means uh, shedding gallons of blood and praying to Krishna and just praying to keep them in Krishna because Maya comes. Maya has two aspects. She keeps people in illusion and throws them into illusion. Just like keeping people in illusion, just like I'm talking to someone. Would you like to chant Hare Krishna? Oh no, I don't have time. There's many responsibilities. And throwing them into illusion is one day there's a brahmachari going out and distributing books and he sees a beautiful lady and he runs after her. Like the story of the Jamil. I'll tell you an interesting story. Uh, this is from Brazil. Once upon a time there was a Sankirtan, but he's distributing books serving Prabhupada on Sankirtan. And so there was one in uh, Brazil, there's a lot of witches. It's true, I mean, I've been in South America, there are real bona fide uh, voodoo witches. So this one witch threw a lizard at this brahmachari. You know, lizard, reptile, tiki tiki, you know, whatever it was, lizard. Boom! And he went, bah! And he started to follow her. And all the other brahmacharis, what did they do? They tackled him and brought him back to the temple. And he was bewildered. Oh, 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 found the girl of my dreams. And they gave him a cold shower. And after that, the girl of his dreams went away. Another story that occurred with the throwing of someone into Maya. So once upon a time in the brahmachari ashram in Venezuela, one of the girls wanted one of the boys. There's nothing wrong with marriage, it's nice, but don't go about it this way. So she made a voodoo doll of the boy. Nice little voodoo doll. And she just kept the voodoo doll, voodoo doll close to her. Oh, my dear Brahmachari Krishna Das, I love you. I cannot live without you. And then one day the brahmachari woke up and like a haunted person, he was kidnapped. Anyway, so, I know I'm telling funny stories, but these are true stories. I don't make things up like this. It's too crazy to make up. So the whole point, I mean other types of maya too, you know, there's like one sees a fancy car and goes after a fancy car or one you know, whatever. There's all sorts of different Maya. Maya has different flavors, like they say Baskin Robbins ice cream has different flavors. So on that happy note, we went one hundred and twenty eight to one thirty two today. I think we're gonna stop and get some questions from all of you 
wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Uh, let's see. Oh, someone asked a question in the chat window. Just let me uh, relieve you of your muting. So you can ask questions. Let's answer the chat question first. Chat question. If we are where our consciousness is, then if one leaves his gross body outside of the Dham, but fully absorbed in Dham consciousness, then is as good as leaving body in Dham? Sure. Yes. 100%. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam yajati ante kalevaram. That's what Krishna says in the Gita. Whatever you're thinking of at the time of death, that's what will happen. And those who are in the Dham who aren't following the regulated principles, Guess what type of birth they take in the next life? Monkeys. Pigs. That's why there are so many monkeys and pigs in Vrindavan. And when I'm in Vrindavan and I see the monkeys and pigs, I respect them. I offer my obeisances to them because they were devotees or are devotees but just didn't follow so strictly. And sometimes I call them monkeys, Maharaj, monkey Maharaj. You know, because they're actually devotees who just like, we're living in the Holy Dham with the wrong consciousness. But if you're living in the West with the right consciousness, you go to, back to God. Just like my God brother Jayananda, he had terminal cancer. Prabhupada did not say did not say go to Vrindavan, did not say go to Mayapur. He said, stay in Los Angeles and be surrounded by the devotees chanting the holy name. And he left during the Mangal Arati time. I was there at that time. And he went back to God according to his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada, even though he was getting ready to leave his body at one particular point, and Prabhupada describes he was like a bag of bones, he uh, went to London, and he was actually going to go all the way to the United States to a place called Gita Nagri, but he never made it there. Uh, and Prabhupada said, let me die like a fighter on the battlefield. So if one dies fighting for Krishna, serving Krishna, then he goes back to Godhead. Just like recently, you know, one of my god brothers, uh, Bhakti Chumaraj, he passed away in the Western world in a hospital. But he was fighting for Krishna. He came to the West to preach. He was fighting for Krishna. So if one dies in such a situation, how glorious, like a soldier. Like if a soldier passes away because he runs away from the battle and they shoot him in the back. And you say, well, he was heroic, but he got shot in the back. Anyway, so <laughs> it's not so good for his reputation. So a devotee should be concerned with his spiritual reputation. So, you know, if you're getting ready to leave your body, yes, you can go to the Dham. I mean, if I have some notice, if I get an email right now saying you're going to die in 24 hours, then sure, I'll get on a plane and go to the Holy Dham. But I haven't gotten that email yet, and I don't know who would send it. Uh, then I'll just go on preaching Christian consciousness. And if I die on an airplane, if I die on the computer talking to you, that would be interesting. Die giving my class one time. Uh, then I go back to Godhead. That would be pretty nice, going back to Godhead, because I'm serving Krishna by preaching Krishna consciousness. Yam yam vapis maran bhavam yajate anti kalevaram tam tam vaiti kontia sadatad bhava bhavata. What does that mean? Whatever state of mind one leaves his body, then one attains that state without fail. Just like our friend Bharat Maharaj. He was in a holy place and he was meditating and he happened to meditate on his little pet deer. And next life guess what? Didn't go back to Godhead. He took his birth as a deer. And he was in a holy place, meditating, 
chanting his rounds, not with real attention because he was thinking of the deer instead of what he should have been thinking of, and then he didn't go back to God, and, you know. See? It's practical, isn't it? you got to think of Krishna to go back to God. It's not simply you put your body somewhere and you go back to God. I mean, there's a benefit, obviously. But if you're doing nonsense, then your nonsense is actually amplified in the Holy Dawn. If one commits offenses, if one uh, breaks the regulated principles, the, the reaction is like a hundred or a thousand times more. That's why Bhaktivedanta Thakur so says just two weeks, two weeks, buddy. Two weeks. Fortnight, buddy. But people go, you know, they go for social life, hang around, you know, whatever. I mean, if you have service, service means you're an integral part. Uh, what you're doing is you're adding some function. Yes, you're engaged in deity worship and something. You're ready. Not service is not you know eating at the restaurants in Mayapur, hanging out with your friends. That's not service. Service is something different, being part of an integral part, uh, adding something to the movement, and that means one has to sacrifice and be places that one ordinarily would not want to be. in order to spread the movement. Just like this Brahmin Kurma, he was told, you stay home, because that's going to be the most effective means for presenting Krishna consciousness to others. Remember that. Okay, on that happy note, we can... Oh, here's another question. For me, when I'm not able to go to Vrindavan because of COVID, I'm thinking of Dom, but once I'm in Vrindavan, I'm thinking of Lloyd Bazaar. Yep, very good. And I've seen that with just about everybody I know. That they go to Brindavan, yes, for a day or two, you know, Radhe, 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 Radhe. And then after that is Lord Bazaar. And Prabhupada said, Krishna is everywhere in Brindavan, but he's not in Lloyd Bazaar. And of course, Krishna is in Lloyd Bazaar, but Prabhupada was saying, your, your consciousness that you have when you're in Lloyd Bazaar shopping, you know, saris, you buy the latest saris. And then in the name of DD shopping, you spend like 10 days just like shopping for these little mukuts and everything like that. I mean, it's not bad, you're shopping for the DDs. But if you spend all your time in Lloyd Bazaar, uh, this, the, uh, I'll explain Lloyd Bazaar in a second. It's not Lori Bazaar, it's Lloyd Bazaar. Vijay Radhika, you wrote it wrong. So it's Loy, L-O-I, Bazaar. So uh, if you spend all your time shopping instead of hearing and chanting, the whole point of going to Holy Dhamma is to hear and chant. Two weeks. Any more, I question your motives, unless you've been assigned that service by your guru. I question so, all right, so here. What is Loy Bazaar? Okay, I will explain. Vrindavan City is there. There is the Krishna Balaram Mandir, which Srila Prabhupada established, which is on the Bhaktivedanta Swami Mark. And then when you go into town from Bhaktivedanta Swami Mark, you take a left and a right, you get to the main bazaar. Bazaar means it's a fancy word for mall. <laughs> it's not a mall. For a street with shops on it. And that's the street where most of the devotees are in Vrindavan. Why are most devotees there? I mean, I may be exaggerating, of course. Why are most of the devotees there? Because they have the most beautiful saris. And all the shopkeepers are from the similar family called Agarwal family. I'm friends with them. Don't get me wrong. They're all Brajabasis. I love them. They're great personalities. I, and you know, and every time I go there, they know my name. 
They have pictures of me. Why do they have pictures of me? And why do they know my name? Because they know the name of every single guru in ISKCON, every single leader in ISKCON. And if you go there and you say, I am from Fiji, I was like, oh, I know your guru, your Krishna Maharaj. And he loves me like anything. He comes here all the time. Here's his picture. And of course, they have my picture that I, you know, when I went shopping there. Here's his picture. And then the disciples thinking, wow, Guru Maharaj loves this place. And they sit down and they say to you, would you like some linka? Of course, you probably don't want linkas. It's like an uh, Indian version of 7-Up. Would you like some orange juice? Just sit down. We don't have anything to sell you. And then they say, oh, uh, you look like you need a new sari. And then the next thing you know, there are 500 saris piled up around you <laughs> for you to choose from. And you spend the next eight hours going through these 500 saris and uh, you feel so guilty that you buy at least 100 of them. <laughs> so Mayapur just said, it's a very accurate story. So uh, then you buy at least 100 of them because you feel really guilty and then they pull out other stuff and they say, well, what about the devotees in your temple? You know, they need some dhotis too. And we have these dhotis. Let me take your measurements and they take out their measuring stick or tape and they measure around your belly and if you're a man of course or a woman I don't know and they pull out all your it, the earrings and by the time you went there at 9 o'clock in the morning by the time you're finished it's 7 o'clock at night and you spent about 3,000 US dollars there and you have to hire three rickshaws to take all the stuff back you have to get all these like metal Indian trunks to take it all back to your room and lock it up. And then to carry it all back to wherever you came from, you have to pay overweight charge on the airlines. And that's Lloyd Bazaar. I think everybody, <laughs> everybody knows that's Lloyd Bazaar for you. And I'm not saying you should, shouldn't go there. You can buy things for the deities, it's, you know, very, very nice. But uh, we find that a lot of devotees spend all their time there. And since we're doing some particular service here, should we continue the same service in Golokadam if we're able to reach there? You may, you may not. But, uh, and then in Mayapur, there's their, you know, there you have your similar things. In Mayapur, you can go to Mayapur and then you have your several pizza places there that you can go to, you know, with genuine pizza cooked by devotees from Italy. And you sit around with all your friends and drink your was it lassies? Yeah, they have lassies there. You drink your lassies with plenty of sugar in them or whatever. And you hang around. And yes, you go to see the deities. Nitai Gor, Hari Bol. And then, and then you go and take some prasadam with all your, your friends at the, at the different restaurants there. I mean, it's a, it's a Epicurean's uh, delight in Mayapur. There's Chinese food restaurant there. There's, I don't know if there's Japanese food. Maybe, maybe not. There's Italian food, for sure. That's the favorite food of all the people there in Mayapur. There's, of course, Indian food. There's all sorts of things. <laughs> there's all sorts of food there. So you spend several months, and that's your life. Spend several months hiking out with your friends, and then whatever, nice weather. Then you go to the Ganges and take a little dip in the Ganges and sun yourself and in this way enjoy life. So it's one thing if you're posted by your spiritual master somewhere and you're given service, that's, that's one thing. Just like you see there's many, many, many nice devotees from all over the world working very hard in Mayapur and Vrindavan. Bhaktivinoda Thakur did say a fortnight, that is our Acharya Bhaktivinoda Thakur. 
and and Prabhupada was very cautious about romantic affairs in Vrindavan. In fact, uh, at one point, Prabhupada wanted devotees who got too romantic, he sent them to Delhi. So, you know, things have changed since Prabhupada was on the planet. You know, Prabhupada was a general. He would send people out, like preaching. If Prabhupada saw someone hanging around somewhere, woo-wee. Uh, I remember one of my godbrothers, I'm not going to mention his name because I didn't want to criticize him either. He would be in Vrindavan. He would be in Vrindavan and... Uh, Every time he saw a Prabhupada, Prabhupada came for his walk, he would say, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. And one day, Prabhupada came out of the temple and he saw that, you know, there was some dirt somewhere around the Krishna Balaraman temple. And he, the devotee kept saying, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, do something practical. Do something practical. So the devotee should be thinking about value adding as far as bringing people to Krishna consciousness. What is the most practical way that I can bring people to Krishna consciousness? Most practical way. Of course, one has to follow very strictly. We'll let we'll questions tomorrow. This is my lecture for today. So one has to follow very strictly the sadhana process, waking up early. Waking up early is essential. Because when you wake up early, you can actually focus your mind on Krishna. And if you're not waking up early and have good sadhana, your preaching will be like a wet noodle. That's it. In other words, it's like can you imagine, let's say, if you had a fight with someone and you had a wet piece of spaghetti you were fighting them with? <laughs> I mean, this is not very effective. You just like, you know, someone comes to attack you and you just hit them with a piece of spaghetti. That's pretty stupid. So you have to have really strong sadhana to be able to help people. So that's a prerequisite. But apart from that, our lives should be dedicated to helping people because what else is the meaning of life unless we can help people? I mean, why are we here? What are we here in this world for if not to help people? I mean, that's, I mean, that's the way I think and that's the way Prabhupada thought. And Prabhupada was sacrificing his health, everything in order to, uh, his, of course, his happiness, he was happy. But Prabhupada was sacrificing everything to help people, so we should be thinking like that too. How can we maximize helping people? You know, help your family, first of all, don't neglect your family, and help humanity, help all living entities, and then Krishna will be pleased with you. And the way you do that is being spiritually strong on a daily basis, not just once a year when you go on pilgrimage, but on a daily basis, every day. Like the six ghost mummies of Vrindavan, it's described that their sadhana was like lines on a stone that could not be erased. Okay, on that happy note, it is time. Sorry for my lecturing to everybody, but there's a time and place for everything. So we'll see, it's, uh, tomorrow we can take more questions. I'm sorry, I saw some hands up, didn't get a chance, and uh, uh, we will take questions tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, just remind me that I didn't allow anyone to take questions today. So, all glorious through His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki.